before we even discuss it, this is the aftermath. And it is time to meet the boys on Mill because the Sun Devils knocked off number seven, Arizona, at the McHale Center on a Desmond Cambridge half-court buzzer beater. My God, we have a lot to get into. Okay. Boys, how we feeling? How we feeling right now? I'm glad, I'm glad it took us a little bit to get live. Because, first of all, we were out of breath for about three minutes. <laughs> yeah. Second of all, we couldn't think straight. No. I tried to craft like four tweets, <laughs> and three it. came out just hot about 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 Like <laughs> couldn't nothing. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. We're celebrating. Even if you it got work tonight. to celebrate. You okay? gotta fly a plane, Arizona State drive a bus, U take a, a shot. At the McHale Don't Center. Don't take a shot. Drink responsibly. 89 to 88. They did the thing. They okay? Did the they, did, thing. they did the thing that had avoided Bobby Hurley for, what, 29 times? 29 times. Too many. Too many times. Hey, so this is what we drink to. Okay, we're drinking a Des, him, came, him, bridge, him, junior, him. No, it's it's Des, him, came, came him, him, June, him, him jur. June, him, jur. Yeah. Hey, you know what? To being a fucking sun devil. Hey. This That's the, what we drink. This is, course, the aftertaste. Baby. this is the aftertaste. This is, fuck this yes. is the dew from the gods. Cheers, chat. This Cheers. is mana. Ah, it tastes like victory. Ah, like water. It's actually pretty fucking good. That actually is pretty smooth. Why is Jose Cuervo so Ooh, good? I don't know. That was actually pretty smooth. Not gonna lie. No free ads. The only time that I think we've ever taken tequila shots on a show live. That should tell you how important that moment no. was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the only time we've no. ever... Did we do it one other time when the Cambridge Brothers yeah. scored 15? Yeah. When was that, though? Oh. That's, I mean, still, though, that post game is one of my favorite. And that might be one of my, like, favorite moments in the office, point blank period, because Damon was our producer. Oh, yeah. man. Damon was our producer. And if you don't know, Damon Dog, absolute wildcat, just super fan. Mm -hmm. um, and he was producing Very the show. Very delusional, too. We were watching the show, or we were watching the game, and we're, me, Shane, and Sean are all right there. Damon is in the back of like where the recliners are set up in the studio watching the game kind of away from us. And Dez pulls up, sinks it. We lose our shit. We are running up and down. Shane takes off full sprint to the back. I take off full sprint after him. We're like just jumping up and down celebrating over there. Eventually, I turn around. Right, because I'm like, we got a show to do. And I just see Damon staring at us and Sean, like double birds, just staring this close to Damon, just flipping double birds. <laughs> fuck you, fuck you. The entire it was one of my favorite moments in this entire office. It was, I mean, next level. You can't recreate a moment. Yeah, like this that. is the Hail Mary of basketball, and it's even more amazing to me. Like the, you don't, you don't. You don't make half court shots often. You don't make half court shots at any buzzer often. You don't make half court shots to win a game often. Those are all incrementally smaller as it goes on. But you don't make a, a half court shot to beat your rival at their there, home yeah. court when they are top seven. They're number seven. They're number yeah, they're seven. seven in the country often. After you were down ten, you trailed uh -huh. by ten in that game. You don't do that. Ballo, he missed the free throw. Yep. Just miss yeah. it. Make the first. If you if, if you if you make the first, then 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 you can make the second. But if you miss the first, you gotta miss the second too. Yeah. Yeah, 2.9 seconds, full court, getting bound the ball. He's running. I mean, and you could just tell, like, obviously, it's you don't stand and be like, yeah, you know, it meant a lot. Because duh, I mean, yeah. Like, duh. But Bobby's, Bobby's reaction, reaction is as incredible. well. I don't know if I've ever seen Bobby happier. I mean, the dude is like a, a, like a weight lifted off of his yeah, chest. He yeah, he was getting the business the entire game yeah. from the fans. It was such a, like, you could even see that on his face and in, in mm -hmm. that clip of him, like, just, like, jumping up, hands up, like, yeah. oh, my, like, we did it. Like, it, it's such a surreal moment and surreal reaction. He does that, turns immediately. He turns to the crowd. He turns, he turns to immediately the crowd. to the crowd. <laughs> and that's, like, Again, this this I mean kind of takes yourself out of the conversation of the the Des Cambridge shot the you know miracle at McHale whatever like just Bobby Hurley's passion for ASU and his hatred yeah. for U of A fans it is absolutely incredible. Chad Johnson in the chat, my wife saved the video clip of me jumping up and screaming <laughs> That's in awesome. our basement. Again, one of the craziest moments of 
Arizona State basketball history again in the last two, three decades. Again, for those of you that don't know, here are the basic details of the miracle at McHale. Happened just last year, February 25th, 2023, ASU at the McHale Center taking on number seven Arizona. And of course, Des Cambridge Jr., one of your favorite players. Yeah, I, I I was thinking, I don't know if I would have ha rather had anybody else in the past 10 years take that shot. Not like, even Marion Jackson? No. Like, it, before I'm, I'm be, before I'm, knowing that it goes in? I'm being is that what you're saying? Yeah, I'm okay. being genuine. Like, yeah. he is a shot maker through and through. That's what he does. I used like, to practice those. Yeah, yeah used exactly. to practice those Off shots. the wrong foot, too. We haven't talked about that yet. The fact that it was off the wrong yeah. foot. It's just, it's insane. It was so improbable. And there, and was, it, there was no glass, right? No, no, it was straight was, swish. It was, yeah, it was right. one of the cleanest swishes I've ever seen in yeah. my entire life. Yeah, back rim down. I mean, and you talk about the importance of that game in terms of Arizona State getting to the the like the first four, mm -hmm. right? Getting into that game, they needed that win. It dramatically improved where they were um, in, in terms of net and trying to get this team on the right track. To, to see an NCAA tournament berth. And in reality, you look at the way that they finished that season, you've got the win at McHale, right? That's coming after a eight-point victory over Utah. You drop a game to number four UCLA. Which they were in in the first half, I remember, I remember if I remember correctly, because I was at the Combine during that. Yeah. And they were in that game in the first half, and then everything kind of fell apart because of foul trouble. Then you lose a three-point game to USC right who before— was, Who was red hot? Right before the Pac-12 tourney. You beat Oregon State, and then you beat USC in a great, great game, and then you lose to Arizona in the, what, Pac-12 semifinals? Sem semifinal, yeah. Like, that win over Arizona was massive yeah. in getting Arizona State to that first four. It was four. huge. Um, yeah, they don't get in if that doesn't happen. And Des Cambridge Jr., like, that that team in general was just so damn fun to cover, to watch. Like, I can't think, again, over the last— outside of the Trey Holder, Shannon Evans team, for yeah. me, that, that team with the Cambridge brothers— Frankie Collins, DJ Horn, like they they just had a a level of pizzazz to them, and I, and I think a lot of what that team mimics what this team is going to have this year. You know, you have two older transfers from lower major schools coming in, and you have that in the in the Cambridge. I mean, Nevada and uh, uh, isn't really the same as your as your Missouri State, but it's a similar thing. You get you you have a shot maker, you have a guy that can jump out of the gym. But now you have two two young freshmen that are or three young freshmen that are really skilled for. Wow, Jaden Quinn. <laughs> this is nothing like that team. Never mind. <laughs> this team should be very fun. But that 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 team just had such a perfect blend of of not only play style but personality that made them so likable. I mean, it's 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 why I preach college basketball as being one of the most unique and fun things in sports. Like Des Cambridge is was not a Sun Devil. Like if, if you ask some if you ask a college basketball fan, he's not wasn't a Sun Devil. He's, he was more of a wolf pack. You know, he's more of a, a guy that played for Nevada. But he's a Sun Devil because of a shot like this. Yeah. Like yeah. And, and he and he adapted that. He's only here for a year. He hated those fuckers at, at, at down in Tucson. Hated yeah. them. Uh, and it just goes to show you how fun college basketball can be and how unique it is. I'm looking at a just a still frame of right after it goes in, like the net's still swishing, and all the U of A fans, their hands are just on their head, oh, yeah. and Bobby's in front of them, just, just yes! full hands up. Yes! Loves it. The, the, oh, my the, gosh. The, the, somebody took, a footage of, just took footage of him doing that when he they were behind the bench, and he immediately does this, turns around, and then points at the person that was talking shit <laughs> like this. It's so good. It's, I mean, again, I, I think for me, like on a more personal note, watching that game, the entirety of it, covering that entire season, it was me, Sean, and Shane doing the the PHNX Sun Devil show like at that time. And we hadn't really had a moment yet that was like that. We had done a bunch of post-game shows. We'd done wins. We'd done losses, a lot of losses, not just for basketball, but for football, whatever. And that was like the first like pure bliss post-game show where mm -hmm. it felt like this is just we're we're just talking about whatever the fuck we just saw because that like you couldn't even put it into words. You said in the clip you tried to send out three different tweets and they just they came out like gibberish because you didn't like no. you were is such an emotional moment, right? You, you you have to almost just like thank the universe. Like, rarely, 
it is really rare you get to experience your team winning a championship in anything. It is almost probably even more rare to have your team win on a buzzer beater in that fashion against a yeah. team that means so much to beat. Yeah. Like that was just a moment where you yeah. had to be like, this is like, I will hold on to this forever. And, and U of A fans can, can, can make fun of ASU fans all they want for beating them one time. I'll take it. You I will, don't care. <laughs> you will never. It, and it's not just, it's not just the victory. It's the way they won. Like yeah. Yeah. that, the, that, the low to high on that. Was, I'd rather have that win than a blowout win over them. To be honest. With oh, yeah. You. oh yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. again, that's something you just don't get to experience. Like, you can't you can't take that you can't take that moment away. And if the roles were reversed, they would never try to take that moment no, away. They'd be talking not. it up like it's the best thing ever. Oh yeah. Right? Mike like, Luke would be unbearable. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. It would be brought up every single show. I mean, yeah. You can you can try to make fun of it all you want, say it's just one game all you want, anything like that. But you know in college sports that when you play your rival, everything goes out the window. Yeah. Like anything can happen, right? And not only does it take like, hey, they're down two with three seconds left because of a of a ball of missed free throw, but like you said, they had to like like scratch back to get back in, that in that game, game. right? Down and 10. so, like, they could have done all that, and you know, Des throws up a prayer and it misses, and it is what it is, and you just never, you never think about that game ever again. And that was a good Arizona team. Yeah, twenty four and four. Yeah, twenty four and four, seventh in the nation. Like, good team, but you know, now you can look at it and say, hey, maybe it wasn't a championship, but it was an extremely pivotal moment in something that Sun Devil fans will be talking about like twenty years from now. They'll be like, oh yeah, do you remember? Yeah. When when Des Cambridge hit that half court hit buzzer beater like, on the, the road for ASU basketball, like I get like, uh, you know, everywhere else, college basketball, NBA, whatever, like there's their own versions of the shot. This is the shot for Arizona State basketball, yeah. and yeah. I don't think there's anything that could ever change it because I can't, I can't even fathom another scenario where a shot has that level of importance against your rival, unless it is you're both ranked. And it's for a championship, yeah. like you guys are saying. There isn't a moment in ASU basketball's history in the future against Arizona that could almost make that sweeter. Right. And part of it, again, the part of the excitement was the fact that it was a guy like Des Cambridge Jr. who had only been there for a year. This team was up and down, and he was the guy all season long. You claw back down 10. Again, on the road. This team wipes the floor with you seemingly every single year. You need this win to keep your season alive. Yeah. And magic happens. That's college sports though, right? It's magical. It, it's, I mean, you can't even, you can't even put it into words, man. Pac-12 after dark has, has uh, energy that nobody else is ever going to be able to replicate. Yeah. Yeah.